<laughs> All right. Welcome, 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 welcome to GM Bailo and the games we're doing today. We've got a wonderful group of players before us, and we are very excited to begin our story today that takes place as they are just waking up in a cabin in the middle of the Parchwood Timberlands on the continent of Taudori in the world of Exandria. And we've got some fun things. First of all, if you haven't already, go ahead and look up the penguin skeleton and get in on the joke. Uh, but <laughs> you probably really don't want to do it. But at, um, listen, you can participate in the stream today by using some of those channel points that you get for watching. You can give our players uh, some amazing inspiration as well as a little bit of treasure boost here and there. And also, uh, if you want to play with us, you can check out all the open games that we have at startplaying.game slash GM slash GM below. That's me. And there's other things you can do to participate as well. And we would love for you to join our Discord and have all types of fun with us and the new exciting things we are attempting to do as people log on. Make sure you give those amazing, amazing boosts. But now... The parchwood surrounds this cabin. It's well made, but still creaky as the morning change in temperature brings the sounds uh, to you. The light starts peeking in through windows. A little misty mist has come in with the morning. At least you think until you smell it and the smell of fried meat begins to uh, hit your noses and some type of boiled grain to make your way down. Um, you see bowls of this grain uh, on the side of uh, the meat, probably boar of some type, so more or less bacon. and. Uh, brown sugar top on each um, oatmeal as well as on one of them in a D sprinkles as uh, the gentleman you're saying with goes yeah, yeah you're talking to your sleep said don't take my sprinkles and my daughter left some the last time she came from the Slayers to take a cake and a Anyway, yeah. Um, and has all of you are ready to go, and they go, I gotta start doing the stuff around. Leave it you leisure, you're good guests. Uh, and uh, be careful out there. Um, before you go, your daughter traveled these woods regularly. Is there a path that would lead us safely to the road? Hmm. No path. Um, she knew the. I usually would come and get her. Um, mm. When I made my way to Whitestone, I usually went north to the mountains and traveled along there. But um, I don't know. I don't. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to lead you all. Um. But uh, tell you what, um, he starts to describe some more uh, monuments and landmarks. And so um, what that's going to do is give you a plus two to your navigation checks on top of whatever you make it. All right, and to start off right now, uh, who needs some inspiration? All right, uh, last, I do. Okay. last get one. Go ahead, uh, Devin, take it. I got one more on the ground here. All right, we'll go to Jackie. So that's from Shales and Zednem Noj. So, as he much uh, obliged. Thank you, guys. Yeah, as he takes his leave of you and allows you to finish. What'd you like to do? Um, 
I, I guess we pack up our things and are about to go and <clears throat> Rengar has been silent most of last night and um, most of the morning just steals himself and goes up to Norder. <clears throat> um, I uh, I wrestled with this um, but if I were you I would want to know mm. three weeks ago um, we were sent to the Slayer's Cake um, something <clears throat> something had been delivered there that was dangerous and we were sent to remove it um, it, we don't know if it was sent by accident or if it was intentional, but some of the workers there died, and I honestly don't know if one of those was your daughter, um, but you should know, and I think you should check hmm. I see no yeah thank you for telling me um, looks at you shaking starts twiddling a piece of ribbon between his fingers that he takes out of his front pocket I'll um I'll head there as soon as I can Let's see if she's there to prepare myself. I'm sorry to have to tell you, but I hope everything is all right. Yeah, no, I, I see why you weren't saying anything last night, but thank you to... If she doesn't come visit, well, won't it leave me wondering? Appreciate it. Farewell. Up my back and start heading out. All right. In case who would like to lead the expedition today? Um, well, I'm sorry. While Rangar was uh, talking to him, I made my rolls for the bag of tricks. Yes. Uh, Rocky is back. Rocky. Rocky. And we've got two new additions. We have Bacon the Boar. And Lucy Purr, the Panther. Ooh. So we're Moose, Panther, and Boar today? Yes. Very nice. Wait, moose or giant elk? Yeah. It's a giant elk. Sorry, giant okay. elk. Yeah. Okay. It's a giant elk. Boar yeah. and a panther. Yes. And they don't eat each other. No. No. <laughs> okay. No, they don't. And the boar's name is Bacon, and the panther's name is Lucy Purr. Okay. Well, yesterday I rolled a one, and Mortis rolled a one, so <laughs> I don't know. If... I'll give it a shot. I'll take the first the first navigation roll. I'll try and give it a shot today, sometime today as well. Um, so it's a survival check. If I may, uh, we also have that bonus once in the next 24 hours, double proficiency for proficient for saving throw. Just throwing that out there. All right, for the saving throw. Uh, I have four ability check or attack, not saving throws. Oh, I might have written it down now. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'll, I'll cast guidance on myself prior to. And let's see what they, they give me. So that's 16 plus. One, so 17 total. 17 plus the two gets you to 19. Cool. 
Very cool. And then... See where you end up. You begin uh, moving further, and it's not, um, Uh, the sun is just par barely peeking through uh, kind of light clouds. Did rain a lot last night. Um, and after a little bit of time, you come upon um, some buildings of stone. It's a slight clearing, uh, though still overgrown. The the thick wood uh, here uh, does seem to be younger, if you would. Um, smaller trees. And you see in the middle of the clearing is an altar. And it's mounted on a circular uh, stepped dais. The dais itself is surrounded by crumbling pillars. Suggestion of maybe elven architecture. And there's the wind here is odd. It seems to blow past your ears. And you swear someone's talking, like whispering. But you can't make out what. What'd you like to do? Um, do we see any more skeletal handprints in the ground? You do not. Does anybody else hear the that whisper in the ear in the wind, or is it just me? Uh, I was hoping it was just the wind. Mm, I, I, you know what they're saying. Can't make it out. I know what they're saying. This is a wedding altar, guys. Now you guys don't have to be in trouble anymore. All right, who's up first? Hmm. Hmm. I'm, mm. I'm not certain that's how that works. Uh, do, do we even have someone that could perform such a ceremony? Here, here. I can. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you were going to get out of it that easy, Rengar? Dare to dream, <laughs> but <laughs> hmm. the monks take oaths. So Enigma would like to kind of approach it and investigate. She'll pull out like she pulls out a journal and we'll start like sketching it and like writing down facts as she investigates it. Um, I'm gonna have Lucifer. Uh smell around, see if he smells anything weird or hostile. Okay. Can make a perception check for Lucy Purr? Lucy Purr. Perception is wisdom. 
Hmm. It's pretty wise. <laughs> Not with that roll, though. Um, <laughs> that's a seven. Nice. Oh, wait, no. Perception skills, perception plus four. So that would make it a nine. Okay. Uh, that's with advantage, right? Oh, no, that's not with advantage. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay, so that is a 15. Something they kind of... And they, something that they are not entirely sure of seems to be closer to the altar itself. And um, Enigma, as you approach and you're drawing the altar, you quickly see what got Lucy Purr a little upset. You see a spectral form of a being with sharp ears similar to Ceres, but on long ropes, and they regard you. Greetings. Are you here for the wedding? No wedding here. Is that the business that brings you into the wood? Sayuri, and she'll point, she'll point back to Sayuri, said, this is an altar for a wedding. Joinings did happen here once. And that is why you were here? Um... There was talk about some people getting married in order to not become skeleton centaurs. I don't know if they really want to do that. There seems to be a bit of hesitation. What, what other so, purposes does this thing have? It was important to us in our worship of Malora. But what brought you to the wood then? What business in general, if it, your bonding, what's not your primary reason? We came in search of additional information about an archfey that's buried, not really near here, but close to here. Um, somebody has been taking, I guess you would say it's remains and using them for to do bad things. The changing corpse. Then offer your prayers. See if you appease Malora. And it steps back. Hmm. What gifts do we have that could appease a goddess? Well, it said prayers, right? So all we gotta do is talk to her? Is that right, Query. Ruth here? Yes. yes. Who's Melora? What is Melora? Why is um, Melora? Hmm. Um, I never studied religion much, but I believe Melora is, um, one of the divine of Alexandria, the, the wild mother. Um, she presides over nature. Oh, I see. And I suppose all of the woods here were under her purview, but I don't imagine she appreciates the undead scarring it. And a prayer is like talking to her? I believe so. 
Revere, you 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 know about this stuff, right? I mean, I pray to the Dawn Father nightly. How does one pray? It's like having a conversation with your deity and asking them to give you the strength to push through or the virtues that do overcome the trials and tribulations of heaven. Um, would you be, would the Dawn Father be upset if you were to pray to a different deity? I don't, I've, I never have. <laughs> Uh, Matt, would would me it would uh, you ever be a cleric or do can I roll something to see? What would it please Melora in in the way of an offering or? or... Yeah, if you would like to, um, if you would like to lead the lead the prayer here, go ahead and make a uh, religion or history check. Your choice. A uh, total of fourteen. Fourteen. See, as you pray, the more spectral elves appear and listen. You recite things you've learned, general things, started to, to piece together what would be a good, uh, what most would regard as an appropriate prayer, kind of by the book, and they nod. They go, and they offer... The shadow of the trees can lead you to something to help with the centaurs as they are. Um, how long does this offering last? the guidance the trees offer as long as you are in this wood take a step out and the blessing will fade thank you Sayuri will kind of like do like this kind of half curtsy thing and uh, mage hand a ribbon onto the altar. That's a nod. And uh, they smile. But don't interact any anymore. <clears throat> Then we leave in peace. Okay. Can leaving this behind. I'm gonna spend another two hours and go ahead if we'd like to and make the navigation. Uh, you can. You're up to an additional plus four on the check now. Ooh. From the guidance of the trees and uh, Norder's uh, instruction. Okay. I am. I said I would do one, so this will be. I don't know if it'll just be one, but I'll do it. Guys, it's... yay! <laughs> I need it. <laughs> oh, what? So that's plus four, right? To mm -hmm. the okay. So that's that's thirty. 
because I got a nat 20 and a 4 on the B4. <laughs> and I have a I have a plus 2 to survival. No. <laughs> nice. So... We're there, guys. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> you begin uh, following the path of the shadows, and you see that um, it, your eyes are able to see that even that that even though the trees have their shadows and different plants and birds can kind of mess with it and you determine where to go in the right time. Um, and you quickly find yourself um, finding uh, an interesting place. Um, you, you quickly move in and you feel you're being guided and you find a rock knoll marked with a yawning cave mouth. It fills the center of a clearing. And you see that the surrounding brush is well tread. I think this is it, guys. Wait, uh, 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 what did we find? A rock what? A rock knoll. Like K N O L L, not G N O L L. Okay. <laughs> I was just checking. I was like, did we find a creature? <laughs> <laughs> Some <laughs> subspecies of gnoll. That... <laughs> Sorry, a rocky okay. outcropping with, with a yarning cave Sorry. mouth that feels yeah. center. Here's me trying to use different language, but fine. <laughs> <laughs> I knew exactly what you were saying. I just but didn't yeah. know how to spell it. Um, <laughs> I think this is it, guys. I think we need to go inside. And you said there were a bunch of tracks all around, like this is a well-traversed area? Uh, yeah, uh, you could tell animal tracks. Animals, okay. Mm. I uh, think we need to go like, inside the cave. This isn't Bertha's cave, right? <laughs> Hard to know. Are they are there massive bear clawed footprints on the <laughs> ground? <laughs> Go ahead, and uh, if you want, this is going to be a survival check. If you want okay. to, okay, I'm going for it. <clears throat> uh, eighteen. Eighteen. You look here, um, and you just peek inside. And you see various carcasses, animal and humanoid, that seem to have been picked clean. And you do see lar large claws, prints, as well as some tinier ones. She's a mama. Mm. <clears throat> Owlbears are very dangerous, and doubly so when they believe they are protecting their young. I go in. <laughs> that, that's about right. Yes. <laughs> no, wait, Dizzy! And I go after, after her. I don't, I don't want to let, let, let her go by herself. All well, right. if Irvia and Dizzy are running in, say Uri is running in. Yeah, hesitantly. Here we go again. All right. <laughs> uh, say Uri, give me a dexterity saving throw, please. Why me? <laughs> I'm sorry, Dizzy. I keep doing that. I'm so sorry. Dizzy. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Why me? <laughs> Dizzy, every time Dizzy does something, say Uri just gets the backhand. <laughs> It's a uh, 13. Okay. Very good. Unless it's magic. It is not magical. Um, <laughs> with a 13, um, you uh, stumble in here and you 
nearly step directly on what seems to be an owlbear cub. It's, it's big eyes, small little beak, uh, puts out at you. Um, and instead you push yourself so you don't totally trip and fall. And you do step on something that is furry and a little squishy. As you hear, um, I cast <laughs> talk to animals. <coughs> okay. You c- okay, this could be very quick. What do you okay. want? Um, uh, I will say. Is this your place? All right. Talk to animals is for beasts, correct? Mm-hmm. This is not a beast. Mm. Unfortunately. So, in that case, roll for initiative. Yep. Here we go. <laughs> 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 yeah, that that was one of those. I knew that their monstrosities in the ring guard did not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like oh. <laughs> All I heard was a growl, so that's why. I yeah, remember. yeah. I mean, it's a good. Uh... Oh no! Ooh, it's so loud. All right. So, Mortis, 19, Dizzy, 4, Rengar, 18, Uruvir, 13, Rowan, 16, Seuri, 7, Oof, Enigma, 22. Holy cow. (laughs) Oh, Oh, no. (laughs) All right, so, first things first, we're going to get you all placed on the map once I make it big for you all. Yeah. Oh, man, because I think Ringar is, like, still outside the cave. (laughs) (laughs) Irvier. Mortis is definitely outside the cave. (laughs) Irvier, you didn't happen to, like, prepare sleep, did you? (laughs) (laughs) Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep. (laughs) Shh, 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 shh. It's okay. I'm a Fig Newton of your imagination. (laughs) Yeah, Rowan can just sing him a lullaby back to sleep. There It'll we be go. fine. <laughs> All right, so the larger one will be by Dizzy. And basically flanked with the smaller one. So get everyone on here. Everybody else. I think Rengar was almost just outside the cave, yeah. Yes, I was the one peeking in to see if there were owlbears in sight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, as that is getting situated, uh, Enigma, it's your turn. So, my action will be to cast Mage Armor. Okay. And, uh, Um. Ringar, that didn't sound good. Uh, no, that sounded like a full-grown owlbear. Oh. But Query. It... Yes. That's an owlbear. Um, <laughs> and that's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. First things first, it's going to come out with its beak at Dizzy. And uh, here we go. Um, That is going to be a 13 hit, Dizzy. Which I think misses. Oh. Yep. 
Yep. All right. And then two large claws come at you uh, with a 15. That hits. And a 24. That misses. Just kidding. <laughs> that hits. Okay. In that case. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so the t- t- two attacks together are going to do 31 slashing damage. Jesus. <sighs> All right. And then Mortis. Are you still um, up? <laughs> that's a yeah, that's a good question. Um <laughs> So Mortis hearing the, is there light? There's there's not going to be a lot of light in this cave. Is there enough in the entryway that I can see this creature? Or... Yes. Okay. So uh, Mortis will, yeah, Mortis will run forward and, oh, what can I do? I mean, I'm definitely going to attack it. So let's just start there. Um, <laughs> so we're going to take an unarmed strike okay. for a 20. Nice. <laughs> um, four. Uh, nine bludgeoning damage. Nice. Okay. Nine damage. Punch this thing. It is thick. And as you, you hit it, you feel its muscles. It's like you're doing muscle bruising, but they, they could be six inch of thick muscle on this thing. My God. Yeah. Um... Okay, and then I'm going to uh, flurry of blows, I suppose. All right, you do have a uh, advantage because you're flanking. Oh, okay. Um, two, 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 two. Where did it go? There it is. That is twenty-five. So I yeah, hope that, that hits. Hit. That hits, yeah. <laughs> Uh, for seven damage. Okay. Uh, and then the last strike. Oops, I forgot to roll that one with advantage. For 22 to hit. 22 hits. For five damage. And then I will use my drunken technique to move away. Um... Is is it just the two? I only see the two owl. Be- I see the big owl bear and the the one cub. Is there another cub there? Uh, there is a secondary cub. Yes. Uh, where is the other? I want to move sort of away from the cubs. Okay. Uh, so Mortis is going to move away from where the cubs are, essentially. There we go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> The armored baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> and that's going to be my turn. I like it. All right. Excellent. Uh, in that case, uh, real quick, uh, say, Uri, where are your animals? Um, well, the giant elk would be out, outside because he couldn't fit in. Uh, the other two are probably right behind Rangar. Okay. Yeah, just giant elk hanging out. Of the two, good to go. Yeah, very, very cool. All right, in that case, Rowan, it's your turn. Okay, uh, Rowan's gonna pull out his bow. Oh, is that the entrance? Okay. Uh, man, I wish I had. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull my bow out. I'm gonna draw it. Try to take a shot at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, try to piss it off, hopefully. <laughs> Get it off dizzy. And, um, 
Here we go. Ah! Bird nine. <laughs> you fire and and on its face there's like several like what look like long feathers um that encapsulated and the bow boat hits and it sticks in as though it, they were like thick uh pieces and almost like sparks as though they're rock hard oh and kind of as though it hardly uh, noticed i will then use my I'm gonna use my bonus action. I'm a uh, kind of see dizzy, I guess, somewhat. And just <laughs> you got this dizzy hanging there. It's not that scary. <laughs> Mostly hair. It's feathers. I know it's not a good song, but I give her <laughs> bardic inspiration. Kind of surprised that this thing sparked when I hit it with an arrow. You got it, Rengar. Um, yeah, let's see, um, <laughs> oh man, yep, <laughs> I'm gonna, Mortis moves, so I'm going to run into exactly where Mortis was, and okay. like with Disney again, <laughs> oh. and I'm going to draw up my spear and attack okay that's a dirty 20. nice that hits so it takes oh uh, that's not great four piercing okay and I'm going to bonus action patient defense, and I'm also going to back away from it. Okay. Uh, then it will try to take an opportunity on you. Uh, that's a natural one. It hit, it misses. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it doesn't hit on a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, its modifier is a 14. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see what the uh, cub is going to move and begin to um, kind of move around and keep step with uh, its mama uh, to essentially provide the help action. And Urvia, it's your turn. <clears throat> I'm gonna go up to Dizzy and check check on her. Are you all right, Dizzy? And I'm I'm gonna use um, preserve life. And you can go up to what's your maximum HP? Thirty four. Thirty four. So you can go up to half half health. And I kind of just dip three fingers into what I presume so, uh, she got like a bloody nose of sorts. Mm -hmm. And I point over to the three um, bears and I cast Bane. As my... mm -hmm. Very nice. And that's a wisdom save? Yes. <clears throat> All right. We'll go Mama first. Uh, 13. I'm sorry, it's uh, Charisma, uh, Charisma 15. Uh, okay, Charisma, I'm sorry, so that would be a 12. Um, so, yeah. And the baby, 6. And 8. So all are baned. And I just point at them and, and tell them, leave my friends alone, we come here in peace. Yeah. Kind of this blood smoke moves around them, blocking their eyes. Uh, next one uh, is going to again move, making the next melee attack against Mama at disadvantage. 
And Siri. Um. Fudge. If I get up not close to mom, but kind of behind uh, Dizzy next to Ervir, will I be in, within five feet of Dizzy? Um. Like between Ervir and the cub? Well, can I fit in there and be yeah. five feet? Okay. Yep. Okay. I am going to do that. And with that vantage point, can I see outside the cave yes. entrance? Okay, I'm going to face step dizzy 30 feet to outside the cave entrance. Okay, nice. Very cool. All right, so you take dizzy and you face step outside the cave. Yeah, I'm going to have her face step outside the cave. I can't go with her. It's just her. Oh, and, okay, so you faced up her. Okay, you yeah, stay there. Yeah. I stay there, and I'm going to hold up my hands. And I am going to say, guys, this might be what they were saying We that could help with the centaurs. <laughs> this might be what we needed. I don't think we should kill it. Um... I will hold an action. I will hold... What am I going to hold? What am I going to hold? I didn't even think about what I was going to hold. <laughs> um, <laughs> Feel that. Um, I will hold Psychic Assault. Okay. Yeah, I will hold Psychic Assault and see what happens. Alright, then. In that case, Dizzy, it's your turn. Hi, Kimber. Alright, uh, so I'm next to... The small one and the big one. No, you're all, you're all the way in the cave entrance. I moved you. How'd you move me? In in spring form, instead of uh, moving myself, I can move a creature. Like I can do willing? either or. Were you not willing? Okay, I guess that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, put Dizzy back. Sorry, Jack. I thought I thought you were. I think we would have said something. Oh no, you, you can keep me there. That's fine. That's fine. I, I I just wasn't sure what was going on. Um. Oh, were you willing or not? I wasn't, but since it's already happened, I'm going to just go with it. So just put me back wherever I was. Because okay. well, you're almost dead. Is my point here. Put Dizzy so. back. It's cool for now. Yeah, okay. Right. Sorry about I'm, that. Yeah, sorry. All right. I will do a. I'll just do. I'll try to do an entangle. Um, okay. like, no, no, I don't. No, I don't. Because I can't do that from here. Um. Okay. Um. Why not? I will do a. Because I would tangle everybody else. Uh, yeah. If we fail our saves. <laughs> And that also is why I can't do fairy fire. All right. So in that case, I'm going to. You could fairy fire just the owlbear if you place it in the air. Am I able to do that? Fairy fire is a 10 foot diameter. Yeah, on a point. And he could. Pl they sh she could yeah. place it above our heads and it'd still get the owlbear. The owlbear takes up a 10 foot space. So you mm -hmm. can just get the owlbear. Okay, I'll try that. Uh, that was a um, deck save. Sixteen. That passes. Mm. All right. All right. In that case, I think that's an action. So that is my turn. Um. And outside of the cave is this. What do, what do I see around me, real quick? Um, you see a giant elk, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> and um, a boar I, and a panther. Yeah. Okay. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I just got reminded of something. Uh, that would have been a 13 on the fairy fire. Uh, that's that's the target. Oh, that's your DC. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it still succeeds. Okay. 
Okay, so I just see the elk, right? Yeah, there's no other animals so much. No animals would come near here. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll just do my turn there. That's fine. All right. Enigma. The panther and the boar are out there as well. Okay, so panther, yeah. boar, giant elk. So Enigma is going to... Uh, her quill will materialize in the air, and she'll start drawing in the lavender um, energy. Again, she'll draw like um, what looks like a hand with um, arcane symbols and geometric shapes around it. I mean, this time she'll put her hand inside the hand, and so it sort of forms like this holographic hand around her hand, and I'm going to cast um, Maximilian's, Maximilian's Earth and Grass. Ooh. And try and hold the owlbear. All right. Is that a strength Spring check? saving throw, 14. Okay. That is a 16. It saves. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Breaks the fist. Okay. And that is my turn. I'll keep concentrating on the spell. Okay. Very cool. Um, here. Then the bear from its current position uh, trying to protect its cubs. It's going to make one attack from uh, from where it is to Moritus. Um, with a claw. So it doesn't move. It has uh, reach. That's oof. Ooh. Uh, that is going to be an 18 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. Uh, is it Bane with Bane? Thank you for reminding me. 15. 15 does not hit. All right. It's going to try to do another claw. That is with Bane. 17. Oh, 17 hits. Okay. I, I, I think that would... Uh, my psychic... Psychic Assault would... Yeah, you can go ahead and do it. Okay. So, they need an intelligence saving throw as well. Alright. That is negative two. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. It's stunned. Okay. It is stunned, and it takes... Um, Does the stun take place before the second attack? It usually happens just at the same time. Okay. And that's 1d12, and I got I rolled an 11 psychic damage on it. Okay, nice. So it takes 11 psychic. How much damage do I take? Yep, I'm going to do that right now. Oh. Uh, that is 23. Oh my god. Don't get hit, guys. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But it is now stunned. Um, for how long? Um, it is stunned until the start of their next turn. Oh, very good. So you did it in the midst of it. So that's a whole round. Uh, yep. So, Mortis, it's your turn. Uh, since it's stunned, I'm going to walk up and hit it. Yeah. As much as I can, because that hurt. <laughs> um, so, on our strike with advantage, because it's stunned. Wait. Is the is the little one still helping it? Uh, for one attack. So, the first melee attack would be a disadvantage. So, first one straight roll, and then the rest would be an advantage. Okay. That's what I figured. So, straight roll is 12. Which I'm guessing misses. Yep, that will miss. Okay, and then off flurry of blows. Yep, now we're all at advantage. Um, four, 23 to hit. That hits. 
for seven damage. And last one is a nat 20. Oh. Yeah. For seven damage. All right. I rolled a one and a two on the dice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. <laughs> doom, doom. Uh, still feeling like you can't get past its muscle. Right. Would you anything else? Um, I'm gonna stay put this time. Okay, see exactly where you are, Rowan. I will kind of seeing what it's doing. Ah. Uh... <sighs> He's, he's going to put away the bow. Pull out the loop. See if this will work on this guy. Um, it's like a huge strum of his F chord. Um, I'll cast Scatter. Or excuse me, Shatter. Uh, but I'd like to use my reaction, if I may, to... With my feet... Uh, Sorrowful Fate, uh, change the saving throw to one of Charisma instead. Okay. Sounds good. It looks like you can place Shatter in a corner to only get the bear. Uh, do you want to get a cub or no? If, if I can, it's got a 10 foot radius. Okay. Yeah, you can get a cub if you want. You got it. Let's go for it. <laughs> Looks like you can get both cubs, so... The owlbear enrages. Oh, okay. <laughs> What? <laughs> All right, Mama got a 13. All right, so... That was a... It would have been 14 charisma. So she's going to take... 3d8 <coughs> thunder damage. I guess all three? Um, yeah, roll, roll the dice and then I'll do it for the other two. Okay. A total of seven. All right, seven thunder on mama, and then yep, eleven for baby, and seven for baby. And then mama, since I did a sorrowful fate, since she failed, uh, roll a bardic die, take psychic damage equal to the result, and is plagued with regret for one minute. <laughs> And if she were to die... <laughs> Think about she, what you did. <laughs> if she were to die, as a result, if she is able to speak, she has to monologue a dark, poetic final what? words before speaking <laughs> the injuries. Yeah, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, another D6. Okay, it, I'll take it. Oh, man. All right, two more second. damage. Very good. All right, anything else? Um, I will use. Yeah. Um, I will look over at Ringar and start singing. Is this a PG stream? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> no, no, love start singing. Well, fuck you! I won't do what you tell me. And it's, it's the band and and uh, stunned, and hopefully he feels raged against the owl bear machine. And uh, <laughs> that'll end my turn. <laughs> All right. In that case, Rengar, it is your turn. All right. Um. Yeah, uh, I'm going to uh, run up, uh, put sheath the spear as I go, and this time it's an unarmed strike. Okay. And do I have I have advantage because of the stunned, right? Yes. Okay. Is that, oh, well, we'll see. It's a sixteen, but. Uh, 16 just hits. Woo! All right, and that is going to be a hand of harm strike. Nice. And so 
It's going to take 2d4. Well, I'm going to roll the regular damage first. So, that, ooh, that's 7 bludgeoning and 7 necrotic. Oh. 14, very good. Yeah. <laughs> and you punch out and still the muscles are hard. Uh, maybe softening up a tiny bit its hide uh, <clears throat> has almost what seem like geodes or selectites growing on it. We should go while we can. This, I think we're only making it angry. And um, I... Did geodes shatter with the spell? I mean, they're damaged. It's it's okay. worked in with the damage that you have. I'm being flavorful. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm okay. trying to be... <laughs> you hit it. It takes damage. <laughs> <laughs> and... Yeah, I... I'm going to use my movement to get closer to the entrance. Okay. Very good. So Ringo runs to the entrance as best they can with their 40 speed. Uh, oh, I haven't taken a bonus action, have I? Uh, no. Uh, then I'll, I'll just hit it one more time as I, as I go. <laughs> ah, <tick. laughs> yeah. Um, that is a 19. And that one, uh, will be with the spear. Okay. And so it's 1D. Double check. It's going to be... Yeah. So five piercing. Okay. As I go. Very really good. Does it look like piercing did any more damage than bludgeoning did? <laughs> uh, no, it's not resistant to anything. Um, okay. Or vulnerable. It's just hardy. It's just a hard. <laughs> it's a thick mama. That's, it's a know. big boy or big girl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a big girl. That's all there is. Um, Ooh. Very good. All right. Now, there's one cub with a movement here of 40 uh, is getting scared and runs out of the cave. And Uruvir, it's your turn. I'm going to make my way towards the the entrance of the cave and i'll look back and and cast toll of the dead on the hour bar uh, it's a wisdom 15 save okay two so oh that was almost a 12 uh three Three necrotic damage. Nice. <clears throat> and that ends my turn. Got it. All right. Next cub two is going to go to run out of the cave with 40 feet. And Siri, it's your turn. Oh no, these cubs are going to get lost. Ugh. I'm like so sad for these owl bears. <laughs> like, and Sayuri is sad for these owl bears. I'm gonna be like Batman. Well, I. <laughs> the owl bear. <laughs> okay. No, in my in my early Saturday campaign, we actually have an owl bear friend on our part in our party. <laughs> we have like a, well, I don't want to call one. her a pet, <laughs> but. <sighs> And I think all she's doing is protecting her cubs. They drew first blood. Not us. But you, we <laughs> we entered into their territory. I really think that this <clears throat> thing is supposed to help us with the centaurs. 
I don't know what to do. To do what Siri would do. <laughs> don't worry about what the rest of us say. You just do Siri. Yeah. <laughs> Sayuri would try to befriend the owlbear. That's the okay. problem. Okay. Sayuri's going to pull out some rations. Okay. Like her rations. She probably has some, like, she probably snuck some, I think she would have snuck some bacon. Pull out the bacon. Pocket, pocket bacon. bacon. Yeah, pocket bacon. <laughs> and she's going to offer it to the owlbear. And Okay. Try to befriend this thing. Okay. Um, I guess go ahead and make animal handling. Well, isn't it super stunned at the moment? It is. Stunned, <laughs> but doesn't stun doesn't exactly mean that they can't do anything. It's just they can't make attack or they can't. Uh, I don't know. Animal handling. Okay. Okay. Oh no! I'm so nervous. Does anyone have a ball of some sort? I think I've seen this one. <laughs> oh, fuck! What was it? Six. Six. Does not seem to be swayed. I don't know what's your action. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Bonus action, disengage. And run after the poor cubs! Okay. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> She's going for an op attack. <laughs> <laughs> There's son. Nope. Oh, yes, Harry. I was gonna say. I'm. I was gonna. I. I already. I just used my bone. No. Okay. No. You know what? Well, they can't attack me, so I don't need to use my bonus action to disengage. Okay, so I'm cool. just gonna. I'm just gonna run to try and get the cubs, and I'm going to have the boar and the panther try and corral them. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So you can like not harm them, but just kind of like okay, cool, crowl it. Cool. I gotcha. And then Dizzy. How wide is this door? Uh, the door is 10 feet, I believe. And how wide are the owlbear's babies? Um, they are uh, essentially uh, five feet. All right. Um, so they just, so they were able to get by me. Is that? Um, if you wanted to do something, you could have. If you desired, I I, I, I was assuming it was bigger. That, um, yeah, I, I was going to use my turn to go after them anyway. Uh, so that's fine. I'll just run after them. Okay, got it. Cool. Uh, Enigma. Enigma's feeling a little bit confused because there was talk about being friends. There was talk about now we're punching and hitting and we should stop punching and hitting and run away. And then there was punching again. Very confused. Um, is there anything past the owl bear, or does it end in a wall? Um, it's pretty much a wall right past it. Just this kind of cave where it's raising its children. Okay. So, um, Anima will go ahead and try again to use the the hand to grasp the elder. Okay, and that's strength again. Yeah. Uh, let me double and check. Auto stunned. fails for stunned. Auto fail strength as well. Yeah, strength and dex. Okay. So. Yep. Yeah, so. All right. Then you have it grasped. Okay. So then we will turn to the party and go, clarification, please. Are we here in peace? Are we fighting? Are we running? I, I believe we're running. Excellent. I will hold the owl bear while we run. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Uh, so owlbear's turn. And then Enigma will use her movement to oh, sorry. towards the, yep. um, the door. That's the word. That's a door. All, All right. Amber <laughs> starts running towards the door. Albert, come, Albert Mama is turn is here. They are restrained. They're very confused. Uh, 
all they think is people are now trying to kill their babies without them. <laughs> um, so they will still attack Mordis with a disadvantage. Wait, doesn't... Didn't the stun last until the end of the turn? Oh, is it the end? That's right. I think it is, right? No, I think it's the beginning. Let me double check. Double check. Let me yep. double check. Okay. Yep. Okay. It is um, until the start of their ne next turn. Okay, start. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Yep. All right. So that's going to come at with its beak. A disadvantage. Uh, for 13. 13 misses. All right. Claw disadvantage. Um, yeah, 12. And, and, and uh, the second claw disadvantage. Uh, for 19. Ooh. 19 will hit. I'm going to silver right. barb set. It's already a disadvantage. Oh. Is does that it, with the uh, bait? Oh, yeah, I guess I can't, can it? Uh, thank you for reminding me about Bane. That would be 16. Oh, 16 hits. That's my AC. All right. Uh, Just, yeah. Well, I was just wondering if Silver Barbs does anything if it already has disadvantage on the attack. I think it gives it disadvantage, right? Or what's what's Silvery Barbs text again? It says it, it forces a second roll and it takes the lower one of the two. Okay, yeah. So so you can get it to possibly roll lower if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if I may. Um, try to... Okay. Oh, uh, that's higher. Oh. Okay. Careful, Matt will use that against you any chance he gets. <laughs> no, right. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> now, uh, I'll give it to Mordish. All right. Uh, and that is 21. Yeah, I'm down. Okay. Uh, the death save Mortis. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, does Silvery Barbs? How does that work? You can have it for that if you want. Okay. Just a D twenty with advantage, then. Yes. Am I understanding that right? Is mm -hmm. a f fourteen. Oh, it added the two. Okay, yeah, 14 is the higher of the rolls. Okay, um, then success. I'm oh, sorry, that was a death save? Mm -hmm. You don't add anything to a death save. Right, you don't add I know. It, I rolled two d20s and it added the two d20s together. Oh, okay. Four, I'm like... four, 14 was the roll. Okay, that was confusing. So you rolled a 14. Okay. I rolled an 8 and a 14. And okay. So 14 was the higher. Yes. Cool. <laughs> okay. Very cool. All right. Then in that case, Rowan. Um, second, what is my what was that? The okay, one, two, three. Would Mardis be about 15 feet? Would you say 20? Um. 20 feet from Morden. Um. I will. I'll kind of look over in his direction. Be just kind of start 
yelling at him, Come on, you're an elephant! Get up! This thing's just a bear! And, uh... Cast Healing Word. That was my bonus action. Okay. At, uh, second level. Very he will good. heal for... Ten! Okay. Anything else? I will... If I can squeeze by Uruvir, I'll start making my way out of the cave. Okay. And... I will... I will... Uh, action dodge, just in case. Second, the the healing word was the bonus action I moved, and then Kitsy wants to come our way. Okay. And then Uruvir. You're muted. I'm gonna stay put and hold a, a healing word um, in case, because uh, if I'm not mistaken, Al the Albert is gonna get a turn before Moratus can cut, go out. So I'm, I'm trying to be the last one out of the cave. Gotcha. Very good. All right, Siri. I'm trying to corral these cubs back into the cave and be like, no, we want you to go back to mama. Go back to mama. All right. Make a uh, animal handling check. Okay. 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 You want mama, don't you? <laughs> go into mama. Go to mama. Go to mama. You know you want mama. Oh, that's so good. 30, 20. <laughs> okay. Why couldn't I have gotten that last time? It seems like they are being corralled that they act on their turn. Okay. Uh, and anything else? Um, uh, I am going to also would that be considered a action, bonus action? Um, th yeah, that would be an action. That would be an action. Okay. Uh, I can't do what I was thinking of doing then. Because I was going to use my mage hand and kind of hold out, like, pocket bacon in front of them to kind of... To get them back more? Huh? To, to help get them back? Yeah. I mean, that can be I could that can be part of your whole action there. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. And um, bonus. What do I do? Bonus action. Oh, that's all I'm gonna do. Yep, that's all I'm gonna do. All right. Dizzy. Um. Uh, one second. Okay. Um, well, I guess that's that. Uh, so I will... I'll, I'll just... Yeah, I'll just hang out here. That's my action. Okay. Enigma. Bobby there. Yep, sorry. Um
so how far away is Enigma from um, Mortis? Uh, you moved out your speed, I believe. Which was 30, okay. Th 30, yeah, so you're roughly 60 feet. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and step in a little bit and step against the wall so the doorway is clear. Okay. But I'm going to keep my concentration on the hand for now. Okay. And that'll that'll be my action. Want to have the cubs be able to get through? Yeah, you got it. Um, so the owl bear is looking down, and it will do its beak at disadvantage. Straight roll because I'm prone. Yep, that's right. Does does it make does it re uh does it make it safe for the strength at the beginning uh, of the turn? Did you skip me? I think we might have accidentally. I thought I called you, but that's fine. Ringar, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I will. I think it's twenty feet to get to Mortis. Um. Yep. About so. I think. And I will action disengage, and I will grab onto him and drag him back ten feet. Okay. Uh, you don't have to disengage. Oh, because he's... Oh, actually, you're right, because you, you know it's reach, so yeah. And then I will bonus action step in the wind and drag him 20 feet. Okay. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and then, uh, did we look up that... Or, yeah. I, I was telling you, but I was muted. <laughs> so... Oh. Um, so they can take an action to make the saving throw again. It's action. Okay, so it's going to take its action since there are no targets. Uh, for a 10. Uh, 14 is what it needed. Yeah. Okay, so at this point then, sir, what do we want to do? And I'm going to ask Dizzy, I'm open for you to be saying first because I feel like your plans have gotten a little messed up this session so far. So is there anything you wanted to take the lead on here? Uh, I, I do have a animal friendship I could try, since these are now, uh, in other words, these were animal checks, correct? We're doing animal handling, yeah. Right. So would that include animal friendship as a spell? Um, let me look at animal friendship. I have a scroll for it is the reason I ask. Gotcha. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do in this case is if you want to use animal friendship, it usually can only be used on beasts, but if you'd like to make a wisdom check um, in order to use it. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll do that. I'll okay. do, I'll, I'll use inspiration on it. Okay. Is this outside of initiative or can I guide her? Uh, yes, you may do guidance. Okay. Okay. Uh, did Erevir's healing Ooh, word go bad. off <laughs> on Mortis? <laughs> so that's a Three. nine. <laughs> a nine. That is not going to be enough. No, I think you had a... That was two twos. Uh, I don't know if it's roll. been a minute, but you had a bardic. I don't know if you used it. Oh, I did have a bardic. I'll put that bardic in there. Was that a d6? Yes. That is a 12. <laughs> a 12. So, uh, yeah, this 12 does it. Hey. It was actually fairly low. Um, so that would be on the baby owl bears? Uh, or... the, the intention was the larger one, but that okay. was... It, it, honestly, I'll take whatever. So okay, so so the, so the the larger one will get to save, right? The baby. Okay, so here we go. Uh, wisdom save. Does Bane affect that? It would. I just roll it to make it nice, extra low. So that's seven minus two for a five. Oh. <laughs> In that case, 
I'm going to say the spell's power here is fractional, but it's definitely not aggressive. And as the children run in, the spell does go off and can heal um, Mortis, if you so desire. Okay. Um, and they're there, and there's a moment um, if anybody wants to do anything. There seems to be a, a piece that has come over. All right. Um, so that, uh, yeah, that's that's good for a day if we don't harm it. It's <laughs> <laughs> good to know. Uh, sorry, Dizzy. Uh, Is that uh, 11 for me? Yeah. I want to give it my pocket bacon. Okay, you threw the bacon in there. It... <laughs> I think it's. I'm against eating it. It's dangerous, but I think the less of it that are close, the more friendly or at least non threatened it might be. I'm mm -hmm. going to leave the expertise to Dizzy. I'm not good with animals. Uh, what, what, what was the question? Um, <laughs> what do you think we should do next? Um, we can try to talk to them. Didn't, didn't we try that already? So Enigma will slowly approach the owlbear, which is still currently being held. Okay. And she's going to slowly place her hand on it and cast Cure Wounds. Hand out. Uh, we'll go ahead and roll it. Uh, for 12. Okay. The wounds heal up. It's essentially back to full. And as it does that, there does get calmer. It runs and then back to will its drop mom. concentration on the hand. Okay. It <sighs> moves and kind of cuddles its cubs up close, putting them like underneath them as they lord over them and towards all of you. And then Not they will aggressive. slowly walk backwards. Okay. I, I want to say hello. All right. Okay, what uh, do you want to do? Dizzy walks up. Okay. Hello? Looks at you. A little tense. It that was that was my fault. Um, I didn't mean to step on you. It was just real dark in here. But we'll leave you alone. Just gonna. As um, is there anything? you three need it kind of looks um let's see for this i think because you're trying to do speak with animals we'll let this spell kind of happen here and it's kind of Briefly, I want the horse things gone. We, we, I think, can help with that. We were actually looking for them. Mm. 
and it um goes to the corner of the cave and it takes out or it leans down and it picks up with its mouth what looks like a severed hand that's been picked over and it <laughs> throws it at your feet okay oh thank you a uh, pretty gift I, I pick it up yeah, you pick it up um it's barely torn apart and there are two rings on it okay um, um thank you um we'll we'll leave you now we don't want to bother you we, we won't come back good they sought hand they wanted hand oh well, we'll make sure they don't get it and we'll make sure we use it to bring them to us thank you and uh if you want any uh, i have some sprinkles but i don't know if you like sprinkles but uh. i'm just gonna leave a couple here <laughs> right here okay i'm gonna leave now because i know you are very busy and i just start walking backwards and like almost like the royal thing where you greet a king or queen and yeah. you bow and you step back you bow and you step back all the way to the entrance and um i'm gonna go up to enigma um enigma yes dizzy I think maybe you can help me um, with identifying what these are. I will definitely try. So I'm going to hand her the hand. Okay. I'll start with um, detect magic okay. as a ritual. Um, you see both rings here. Uh, one um, seems to be carved of um, bone, and the other one uh, is smooth and wooden, and seems to have depictions of various animals, what looks like birds and bunnies and um, cows. And both come up magical. Okay. These both appear to be of arcane nature. Maybe we should move away from here a bit, and I can take time and figure out what they do if you would all like to. Yeah, I, oh, I, I should tell you, because I don't know if you heard. Um, yeah, we should have to get out of here, though. So I'm going to wait till we're outside before I continue that conversation. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so they said that the, well, they called them the, the horse-like things. Um, they said they wanted that. And so maybe we could use it to find them. That's possible. This one ring here appears to be made out of bone. What kind of bone? I'm not entirely sure. But since we seem to be dealing with human skeletons, that would be my, or humanoid skeletons, that would be my first guess. Um, earlier. Yeah. You you've probably done a lot of you know healing in your day. Um do you can you recognize a bone by looking at the type of material the bone is made of? I mean I'm I'm no physician, but I can definitely give it a shot and see if, if there's any 
any tail on it. Make a medicine check if you'd like. Uh, it's hard to tell. It's, it's there's no shape left. Can't really tell what it's, it was made out of. It's been whittled down so much, Dizzy. I can't really tell if it if it is a human bone or possibly an animal bone. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um, Enigma, do you know if these uh, if bones are used in magic? Like, are they like common things that people use in a spell? Or they can be. There are lots of materials that are used for arcane purposes. What 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 about the other ring? This ring appears to be made out of one of your parents. Oh. It has carvings of looks like animals. Oh, nice. If we have time, I can try and determine specifically what they do. Yeah. I mean, around we... the group. I think I'd be I cool. won't mind a rest. Is everyone okay? I guess now that we're Things kind of got a little hairy there. Um, yes, perhaps, perhaps um, we travel a safe distance, uh, find a place to rest for a moment while Enigma um, divines more on the rings. Okay. Are you able to find a, what's a seemingly a safe clearing? A forest. Yeah, and Rengar stay on lookout while we take a short rest. Okay. Nigma will um, withdraw a pearl from um, her bag. And again, the quill will materialize in her hand using the lavender um, energy that is sort of characteristic for her. She'll sort of draw, looks like she's drawing runes on the pearl. The pearl will begin to kind of float around the rings, uh, emitting a purple sort of like misty light. And then at the end of the spell, that light will filter back in through the gem on her head. And she'll start with the skeletal ring first. Okay. This ring is carved from the bones of a lich. It allows the wearer, if they are living, to um, be aware of any undead within 150 feet. As well, any undead creatures have disadvantage attacking the person who wears this. If it is worn by undead, it makes the creature immune to being turned and adds 3d8 necrotic to all their weapon strikes or melee attacks. Whoa! <laughs> Dizzy. This ring seems to definitely be made of some sort of humanoid. In fact, um, a, a lich? Do, do you know what a lich is? Um, I think so. Yes, I do. Oh, okay. If it's worn by somebody who's alive, 
Um, it has some... It helps them to be able to sense undead within a range of like 150 feet. And it makes it um, more difficult for undead things to hit you with attacks. Um, it would be very bad if the centaurs got it. Um, it um, makes them immune to I'm not sure why I remember this. Immune to something divine casters like Uravir can do. An ability to make them flee. It also makes their attacks stronger with um, necromantic energy. Wow. Um, maybe we could give it to one of the guys over there. Sure. And then I think we'll go ahead and do the same thing with the wooden ring. Again, it'll take about 11 minutes. Mm hmm While he's doing that, that that ritual, I just come over to Dizzy and you, you scared me back there, Dizzy. Oh no! I sometimes when I talk to animals, my voice gets scary, but it's nothing to worry about. It's it's actually really natural and normal. It's, sometimes I have to communicate using grunts and roars and uh, different types of snarling sounds, but it's nothing to be afraid of. I'd, I'd like for you to, to take this and I give her the medal, the medal of Horizon back, which uh, Nordor had given it to us. What, what's this? It's supposed to be able to save you in case I'm not there to help you out. Wait, no, you'll, yeah, you'll be there. If you run away like that and I can't keep up, I may be too late. No, you won't. Can you wear it for me? I feel like if I wore this, it would be like saying that you're not around anymore. I'll be around. I just don't want to be late. And I just kind of grab the metal as start putting it around your neck if it, and tying it, it, it pick up your hair and kind of tie it on your uh, on the back of your neck question is this metal <laughs> m-e-d-a-l oh okay yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is it is not a metal metal no okay <laughs> um and that is in in the inventory um Metal of Horizon back that, that you can add it to your inventory. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually made from tortoise shell. All right. Then as a spell goes on to the second ring, um, this wood was taken from uh, a, or given willingly from a treant. And it has been enchanted with the power of the forest and animals. And it is a ring of animal influence. Uh, which you can find in D&D Beyond. But essentially, it has three charges. It regains 1d3 every day at dawn. And while wearing it, you can expend one of its charges to cast one of the following spells. Animal Friendship fear or speak with animals the 
the fear can only target beasts that have an intelligence of three or lower. Okay. But it's in D&D &D Beyond. I'm look at it. Dizzy, I finished this ring as well. Yeah. And I think this might be good news to you. The wood from this ring was freely given by a tree ant. Oh. And it enables you to use some spells that deal with animals. It has associated with the power of the forest. That's like you, right? Sort of. I don't think the skeletons really want this ring, but I think it's the cooler of the two. I don't know what cooler is, but... <laughs> That is hot. All right. So as you uh, deciding how to use these items you have found, we are going to go ahead and take our break. And we'll be back uh, about 10.16 uh, EST and see you then.
Man, I'm kind of curious how much HP that Albert had left. <laughs> like, did we do like, did we even put a dent in it? <laughs> oh. Maybe the rocks in it. You, yeah. nearly, you nearly had it bloody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was almost. Well, it was almost at half. Yeah. <laughs> and it could kill one of us in like one hit. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Oh. I had plans to get more of this out of there, and then I was like looking at my movement speed, and I was like, it's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> I was just waiting for Irvir to heal me after I got hit the first time, <laughs> only to be hit again and then immediately be back on the ground. <laughs> I was like, oh boy. <laughs> Wash, rinse, repeat. <laughs> yeah. That split up initiative is rough. Nope, yeah. it's again. <laughs> well, it was more that I went right after the thing, so no one could actually heal me before mm -hmm. it got a chance to hit me. Yep. Yeah. Mm hmm. Is why. <laughs> yeah, now that Enigma doesn't have to cast spells anymore, I guess we can start officially the short rest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just want to just sit in there. I'll play some uh, Dulce of Tones on the loot while we're uh, hanging out. Nice. A little song of rest. Yeah. That gives me a. That gives us a D six extra. Yes. Sorry, y'all. Did we hear the conversation between Enigma and Dizzy about the rings, or were you guys like keeping that? Enigma wasn't being particularly quiet about it. Okay. It's just. Dizzy found them, and so just who she directed her findings to. Right. I was just wondering if I already knew the information or if we still need to talk about it. I was dropping eaves nearby. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of like trimming the verge. Why are you dropping no eaves, sir? Promise. <laughs> oh, I dropped my eaves. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here they are. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you finish your rest, take your short rest, and come to an end <clears throat> here, you start dizzy. You hear it first, and then... As you turn your head, everyone slowly becomes aware of it as you do. The light playing of a flute. Sorry, real quick. Could we have taken the opportunity during that short rest to attune to those two rings for whoever was going to use them? Yep. Um, I don't think either actually require attunement. Oh, never mind then. Also, Cute. it looks like Courtney's in our chat, so I don't oh. know if she's waiting for you to let her in. Ah, there, Courtney. <laughs> 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 oh, Welcome I back. thought I was just going to sit backstage the rest of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Thank you. Sorry, back to flute music. <laughs> yeah. But uh, who does have the rings? Let's make sure we know who has rings. That's a good question. Um, I think Dizzy, yeah. if you would like the the wooden ring, I think you're. It, it's almost made for you. And the other one, I think, could be particularly useful from Uravir. Well, that's what I, I was going to say above table. Um, the, all the abilities that the wood ring, I think, 
Dizzy already has. No, I don't. Oh, you don't? I have, okay. uh, I speak to animals, but I don't have the other two. Okay, yeah, definitely. And you want to maybe do the frontliners for, for the lit spring? Maybe, maybe Rengar or Moradis? What is the what is what are the rings? Oh, oh yeah. that's right, you missed it. Yeah. Uh, one is a one is a ring of animal friendship. Oh no, animal influence. <clears throat> the other one's the, the bone ring. It was made from a lich, and it allows you to detect undead creatures within. Uh, how far we say? Hundred and fifty. Hundred and fifty feet. Feet. Uh, where undead attackers have disadvantage when attacking you, and if an undead creature is wearing it, they're immune to being turned, and it adds 1d8 necrotic damage to their attacks. Yeah. But uh, above table, if the healer goes down, almost all of us go down. <laughs> so I was thinking disadvantage from undead against the healer is a good move. Okay. I'll take it. And what's the name of that one in D and D Beyond, Matt? Uh, there is not a name for it. Okay, and that is, that is a Matt item. Um, however, uh, I'll get that coded, but it is going to be. Um, <sighs> that is going to be uh, Azrael's pointer. Ooh, that sounds cool. So I don't think we're going to get frogs tonight. It's too cold out here for it. <laughs> oh. Sorry. I know that's like the song of our people now. But, <laughs> but we do have, uh, it sounds like, some crickets. Yeah. I was going to say uh, a wandering uh, century of grung attack the party. <laughs> so true. It's just too cold. It's like sixty degrees outside. Okay. So, right. and anything else? Okay, now back to flute music. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I hear flute music. Yep. Does he does? Um, everyone begins to hear it. It seems yeah. to be coming from uh, a little to the west. Uh, Rowan. Yeah? What song is that? Um, it's a little ditty I, I picked up. Um, when I was in Stillben. Oh. Um, it's about peace and love. So we should <laughs> head to it. What? We should go to it then. It, uh, it's now right you begin you begin hearing what oh. you're talking about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got lost in the I uh... Are Rowan and Gurdmere related? <laughs> I mean I think of him like a brother, but <laughs> <laughs> oh. I do I recognize it? Doesn't sound familiar. You should probably be like stealthy and sneaky while we're going up to it because we don't know what's in these woods. I can make us real sneaky. That's that sounds great. Also, it it might be that um, the music is intending to be a lure in these woods. Maybe it's a hag. Do I uh, play music? Do I know if hags? I should. I don't know. Do hags I mean, play music? I don't think. <laughs> and their downtime is that I, I, I they mean, practice the flute. <laughs> Unless one was really interested in it, <laughs> they could. I mean, there's nothing that's going to yeah, prevent them I mean, from playing music. The one in the story didn't play music, but I'm sure some hags do. Just like some. People do. Like, I play the flute. 
story? You've never heard the story about the hag and the cottage in the woods? No, I, I don't believe so. No. Yeah, two kids get lost in the woods. They find a hag's hut, but it, it's like made out of a bunch of candy and stuff. And um, the hag catches them eating her house and kidnaps them and tries to eat one. You've never heard that story? How did they get lost in the woods? Did they play her flute and that's why she wanted to eat them? No, she. they were eating her house. In the woods? Yeah. How did they, they get eat? lost? If I remember correctly, I think like their dad or their mom or both of them, they like took them out into the woods and like, stay here. We're going to play hide and seek. Count to a hundred and they left, and the kids couldn't find their way home. What's hide-and-seek? It's where one person um, is a seeker, which means they cover their eyes, count to, like, however many, and the rest of the people in the group hide. And the seeker has to find the hiders. What happens if they don't find them? They get lost in the woods and get thrown into jail and try to get eaten by hags. Or almost get eaten by hags. I'm not sure. And this is an elf game? <laughs> it's a story uh, that I've heard growing up. It, I, I, I'm not really sure. I think it's just a I think it's just something to keep us like little elves from going into the woods and getting lost and getting eaten by hags. But how did the candy not get stale if it was what the house was I don't know. Of? That's a good question. I never thought about that. Well, the your sure. story did not work either because here you are in the woods. I know, <laughs> but I'm with, I'm not with I'm not lost. I'm with you guys. Did she play the flute after she eats them or maybe What did they taste like? The children? Mm -hmm. I guess it depends on what type of elf they are. What kind of elf they are? Yeah, like right now, I think I would probably taste like cotton candy if I was uh, in my... I immediately lick her arm. <laughs> <laughs> it probably tastes salty and gross. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Anyways, back to the flute. Um, are we going? <laughs> what <laughs> are we going? Oh, <laughs> um, stay within thirty feet of me, and we can sneak. Okay. All right. I'm gonna okay. cast pass without trace. Do I need to roll stealth for my animals? Uh, yes. Okay. But they also get passed without trace, I believe. Okay, cool. Give me a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Are we all rolling stealth then? Yes, this would be a group stealth check. Okay. Remember to add plus 10. On top of our regular modifier? Mm hmm. Because I pass, mm -hmm. I'm doing pass without trace. Yep, that's what the spell does. Oof. I got a 28 then. 21. Also 21. 12. 29. 22. <laughs> All right. Okay, so the panther, 13 plus 6, that's 19, right? Mm hmm Okay, plus and... Plus 10, right? Oh, plus 10, so that's 29. The badger... Uh, stealth is dexterity, right? Or not the yes. badger, the boar is 17 plus 0, 
plus 10, so 27. <laughs> Giant elk. A bore out stuff for me. The giant elk would be ooh, 19 plus 3, so 21, uh, 22, 22, so 32, and then moi. So. <laughs> Is that good or no. bad? I'm pretty sure that means she rolled a one. <laughs> I rolled a two. Oh. <laughs> That's 20. <laughs> okay. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. Not 20. 18. 18. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm stealthy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. my, my freaking boar is more stealthy than I am. Giant elk is more stealthy than all of us. Yeah. Everyone, the, the giant has... elk dragging Devin is more stealthy than everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I made the rogue failed the stealth check. <laughs> hey, at least it wasn't a nat one. <laughs> what did you get, Sari? Phone, phone I got it. Okay, so I rolled a two plus six, so that's eight. So that's 18. Okay, so 18. All right. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. You slowly follow. And as you do, it gets louder and louder. And the trees of the wood part to reveal a small pond of sparkling water. It's almost impossibly blue. And you see a form that you're somewhat familiar with, though many of you had not seen it until quite recently. A creature with the head and torso of a man lower body of a goat sits on a small island in the middle of the pond playing the flute and as they play a mischievous smile is played across his face what would you like to do Disney yeah do you know him mm hmm who is he? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Should I talk to him? But your siblings, right? I, I don't know. Maybe. Should I talk to him? Do you want me to go with you? I mean, we're all going to go if I go. <laughs> we have to. Also, if I talk to him, he's going to see all of us. <laughs> I'll, I'll hide. I'll, I'll, I will bonus action hide. I, mean, I feel like I should talk to him, right? I mean, I've yeah, never talk met to him. Another... And I just, I'm going to. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh no, I'm not gonna hide. That was a net one. Hey. <laughs> at this point in time, Rowan's gonna break the fourth wall and look directly at the streamers and be like, our rogue just rolled a net one. <laughs> Let me get a bardic inspiration back. <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay, I think yeah. I left my oh, good dice inside. Hold on. <laughs> Dizzy's going to go talk to this guy, obviously. Um, <laughs> I mean, how could she not? Oh, they're going right. to guide her. Yeah, like, there's a moment where they look... <clears throat> and they kind of finish and wrap up the music. Then they let go and it plays uh, by itself and it breathes. Ha! <sighs> 
They kind of rest their knee on their furry, sorry, their elbow on their furry knee and put their chin on their hand and, well then, to all of you, one of the wild has made their way. I don't know you, do I? So hard to tell people on this plane. I don't know. I thought maybe we know each other, but I don't know. You're from the Feywild, too? Yes. What part? Mm. My domain is... Uh, uh, come from the, the domain of ways and means. Oh. Do you have any family here? I hear no. My... One job is to keep watch over the pool here. What is the pool? Oh. Is this a way back? It is. <sighs> it's to and fro. You can go either direction. Sayuri's just in shock right now. She just... Th that... That goes to... It goes home, Dizzy. Um, what's your name? Ked. Ked. And how long have you been here? Um, I hate time on the side. Uh... I come in and I'll walk. Sometimes I go home for a few dinners. Oh. What do but we eat? What do, you, what do we eat? I eat whatever I want. Anything? I mean, essentially, I prefer it cooked myself. I can cook. I'm. I can. Do you, do we like um, do we like certain places? Do you not remember things? What's your name? Oh, um, I am. And I'll look around. My name is Tree. <laughs> Were you born on this plane or within the wilds? Oh, wilds. I see. You don't know what you ate there? Oh, I ate things. I ate I I ate all things. I preferred them cooked, of course. And you didn't know where Have you lost your memory? No. No, I, I remember. I just didn't know if you knew who, who we were, and I was going to help you. It's it's one of the things I do, is I help mm -hmm. people. Um, it was nice meeting you, Ked. Nice meeting you, Tree. Mm-hmm. How does one get from the Feywild without coming through get to this plane with from the Feywild without coming through this pool? Oh, not this pool. There are ways there's I mean there are other portals. There's magic, of course. Um then of course there's just wanting to I guess would a random fog do it I mean you could definitely be in a fog and fall into a portal and it takes you straight to a temple it could I mean the fey world is mercurial at best and I don't know what domain of delight you were from I don't and remember do, do do you did you see the 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 clouds the 
the dark clouds? Can't say dark. I did. But, I mean, do you know what domain you are from? Yes. What domain? The domain of leaves. Of leaves. Uh, Altamaya is there. Jesus told me about any dark clouds. Yeah, there was. Um, I I remember there were dark clouds, and there was a lot of running. You don't was remember. This, was this a dream? You know what? It could have been. It could have been a dream. It's hard to remember on this side what's a dream and what's real. So you've been here a while then? A little a little while. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's I mean there's talk of Can I ask you this? Were you always the same form as you now wear? No. I see. You weren't? I thought you couldn't change. Can I insight check that? Because my mind's blown right now. <laughs> Make an insight check. I thought, because you asked me if you could... Tree, tree, yeah, tree. You said that you couldn't change like I could. Oh, I love it. I roll a nat 20, so either way, <laughs> you believe me. <laughs> um. Where you said you were from the, the domain of tree or leaves. I okay. I don't really remember the name of the domain, but I do remember the clouds. So you could have been from the domain of firsts. Maybe. So, he starts to measure you very carefully and a little warily, like, he becomes a little on guard. And her hand kind of drifts to their side a little bit. Is there a weapon there? <laughs> um, not that you can see. Okay. Um... I, I'm, I'm the domain of firsts. Was in usurped the queens and kings replaced by um, a trickster of sorts. And was trying to think, I think Gregoria or something like that. And yes, they flipped Gregoria. And it said that the creatures there were the first imaginings of what all of us could be and that some when they ran some went to other realms but many made it here to the material plane and their forms could not be here 
so they changed into things the plane would tolerate. Are you a first? I don't know. Maybe? Would that be bad? <laughs> Few things in the wilds are good or bad. They just are. Depends what side you're on, I suppose, or what... <laughs> I mean, all types are from there. Yeah. Does any of that sound familiar? Um, is that a check? <laughs> um, it's up to you. You do know the name. Okay. You wrote it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Keep in mind your backstory, people, once you send it to the DM. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I still get your heads up. I'm sorry. I, uh, what, what was your question again? Does, I mean, does any of that sound familiar? Some of it. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I mean, I'll see what I can find out. Tree. Do you know if that was your name there? No. I don't really have a name. I see. I can see what people, I mean, I can see. If, unless you want to take a visit. I do, but I feel like we're, we have to do something here first. I'll tell you what, I, bring me back when you come back the sweetest thing that you have encountered and I'll let you and anyone you like through the portal it's a deal excellent now why are you here in the first place what brought you to the parchwood we're looking for um centaurs oh those bone things those aren't real centaurs. I didn't think so. No, they'd be really mad if they knew they were going. Um, I could help you find them if you want. I mean, they like to take people's heads and re They do nasty things. They're powerful, too. Yeah, I mean, any, we'd love any help. Um, well, I can, I can get anyone here to their object uh, which for you would be the centaurs or I can lead them to the road which uh, do you I'm gonna, I, I look back at the group because I don't know that, what, what do you all think so it was lead them to the road or what was the other one help you find centaurs. the centaurs them being us yeah right yeah basically it's going do you want to get to the road so you can go to whitestone is essentially the choice here or do you want to continue this and see if you can't catch up with where the centaurs might be centaur skeletons Sayuri so has checked out um she's kind of fiddling with her bag and staring into this, like, pond. She okay. hasn't heard a word of anything anybody said. Terry, they ask us a question. <laughs> it is, it is, 
quickly, before we answer, do you know anything about the Arch Phase Burial? Arch Phase Burial. Not that I... No. Yeah, there's an Arch Phase Burial somewhere. Yes. That's weird. And people have been taking bits of its remains. Oh. And using it for not good things. That is bad. Do you know if they've gotten to the curse yet? Does the curse make you a bit a different thing? I don't know. The to steal from the dead of the Fae is quite the crime. And thus they can work their justice however they see fit. And there's always a curse to take what is not given from those who cannot give. We do know that it has been several weeks, prob probably months, since they stole from the Archfey. Would a curse have taken effect in that time? Oh, potentially. Hmm. There are tales of, um, I tell them to scare the children to never go to the tombs. Of them who, uh, you could say, have taken. And it wasn't until their great-grandchildren that something took place. Others simply touching it. Uh, and the curse was a sense, was on them immediately, turning the frogs or the such. It's the more calculating, or you could say, far-sighted the individual was. Sometimes the more nefarious and far-reaching the curse. You said it was a crime. Who enforces that law? <laughs> well, all fay. Once we find them, would you help us? Uh, Fae law doesn't really work that way. It kind of works itself out. And thus, plus, um, even the Seely courts would not traffic in the mortal realm. At least not with not official. It would be quite rare. They don't really care. Hmm. Well, um, before we answer, I, ha I have another question. Um, do you know how far it is from here to Whitestone? Whitestone? Probably two days. And if you take my directions five if you just find your own way and about how far from here to where the centaur creatures skeletal creatures might be they kind of close their eyes well kids directions I can get you there in a week they've been moving hmm They're hard ones. They they travel on this plane and another. I see. Back and forth. Therefore, distance don't make sense all the time. And thus, my, my directions while getting you there may take you several places that make zero sense beforehand. Oh. As far as, like... Straight lines. I know all of you like straight lines here. It's so boring. Do you know of a way of bringing them to us? I. Most I do is hide this place when they're nearby. I don't know that much about them. I know that you have. What I know is you have two residents of the Fae. We've never gotten directions from me. 
Therefore, I can give each one directions to what it is they seek or the road to what they do, the white stone. And Rengar looks back to the rest of the group is like, um, well, there are only seven days between now and when we were supposed to turn in this quest for the Grey Hunt. And it seems no matter which path we take, we will not make it in time. Um, but if we because we will not make it in time either way I think if we return to Whitestone now return Devon recuperate ourselves and venture back out into the woods that we might be more prepared for what we find What do you all think? Uh, Dizzy will. Dizzy would have probably left during that conversation to go hang out with Sayuri by the water. The quest or bounty for the skeletal centaurs is going to be needed as long as they are still alive, or, or so to speak. If it has to wait another week, that's that's. I, I feel that like that's a non-issue. If what he's saying, he can only guide Dizzy and Sayuri once because they're fey to what they desire or what they seek. Shouldn't we just let Dizzy decide exactly what she seeks? I don't want to take that away from her. Nor I. Um... I will look to Ked. Would you still be here in four days' time if we returned? If you can find me. But I see. Should, as long as I owe you something, which I owe those two, and you know my name, it's easy enough. We could return to Whitestone and come back and then perhaps go to the Feywild as Dizzy and Sayuri seem to wish to do. But before going into the Feywild, I, I would like to return Devon to his home Ingar, mm -hmm. there's also the possibility that the centaurs will find us. We do have something they desire. Yes, Dizzy's friend said that they want it. Then that might resolve itself. Uh, my suggestion, the plan for now is to um, go to the road and return to Whitestone. Um, do you all have a different idea? You said they have something they want. Yes. Um, Oravir has a ring that they desire. Does he? Well, I'd be willing to trade something. I have something that... If, it, if you do, in fact, have something someone wants, it'll lead them right to you. Once it's placed inside, kind of does a little sleight of hand, and you see uh, what seems to be a glass box. Uh, the frames of the glass are held together uh, by what looks like living golden leaves. And it kind of grows and retracts and vines move around. Let's place it within. 
and someone truly desires it, they know where it is. And what would you like in return for that box? I can't help but notice that uh, you have a musician in your midst. Tube, in fact. Perfect. How about a wager, then? Um, what sort of wager? I'll say... If you can, since there's two of you, if you both play the same time, and you can make the waters of my pool ripple to your skill, you get the box. If you cannot, you get the box. However, you both owe me a concert and it's in a place of my choosing and time. Um, so Yuri is off by her, like with Dizzy, so I'm not sure she heard any of that conversation, but I'll look back at Rowan. I've never really been an ensemble kind of guy. I don't know. I've never... Sayuri doesn't have a flute. <laughs> the devil came down to Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Well, you can always use mine. Here you go. Okay. Can you use his? Are the terms acceptable, <laughs> then? Can I? Can I? <laughs> Would you take candy instead? I've said my price. Fuck. Do you want the product or not? <sighs> Guys, I'm worried. This seems like you just had to say win. something, Rangar, didn't you? Okay. <laughs> I might have led us to this option, but it is entirely your choice to make, Sayuri, and. It will be fine with me either way. I feel like there's a catch. It seems like a win-win. If the ring is inside the box, then we're not going to be able to sense anybody coming towards us. So if we use the box, essentially it is a bait and stakeout, right? Can I talk... Can I can I have a private conversation with my friends real quick? Of course. Go, go, go. Cool. Come with me, just a few. I'll huddle up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I understand you guys have never been to the Feywild. The only Fae you have actually had to any interaction with is Tree right here, pointing at Dizzy. I can see. <laughs> but to him, you're Tree. Yeah. Okay. There are certain things about the Fae that you need to know. And I'm going to explain to them about, like, gifts and thank yous and, uh, like, never say thank you to a fae. Because okay. then they will think that what they gave you is worth more than it was actually worth. And then you owe them something. Thanking them, that's what thanking them means. That's like a still been thank you. Like, you said, <laughs> never say thank you. Never say I appreciate it. Never even, like, don't even say anything that, like, insinuates a thank you. Okay? <laughs> like, don't accept any food from this guy. Like, don't 
bargain with them. They're crazy psycho and they will manipulate the shit out of you. Do not tell them your true name because they will manipulate the shit out of you too. Then too. Like, there's like so be many rules. Conversation because I feel like you're all talking about me. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, you're different. You're you're just dizzy. You're not like you're not like Faye. You're dizzy. I mean, I, I'm a lot like him though. I mean, but you're not like him. Yeah, I mean we have similar legs and horns. Yes, but your personality is different. So you aren't you a Faye as well? No. You're not? I'm just an elf. I'm an Eladrin. You're not you're not a fae? Mm, not fae wild. Okay, I grew up in the Fey Wild and Eladrin are different than the elves you have here because um we still have some of our magic that allows us to shift into certain you know how I change my appearance every now and then but we're not fey in the typical sense of fey it does but, that make sense but i thought you said you were no fey. i'm from the fey wild hmm. i look over at rose like do you know what she's talking about not a clue <sighs> I just hang my head. Let's just do this, Rowan. Get it over with. And Ooh, I, I thought you said not to do it. I yeah. I thought you, you just explained that it. it was a bad idea. You already um, started this. We have to finish it. I was ready to melt this guy's face off, and now you're like, "Don't do anything with him." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." Do we want the box or not? Oh. A revere, and, and I get real close and real quiet. A revere. Are you able to use the abilities of the ring right now? I mean, I don't sense any undead. Can you, but that's use, just the, can you use that ability on the ring right now? The other ring, you don't sense any undead within 150 feet. So you don't have to cast it, it just no, tells it's, you? Yeah, it's, it's just uh, passive, I believe. Oh, okay. Uh, I was just. So the effect is the ring it actually tightens on your finger should you be in the presence. Oh. I, I totally forgot to mention that part. I apologize. <laughs> 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 do, you, do you think I should ram him? Oh, uh, probably no. not piss off the person that's going to give us directions no, to where we I, need to go. I know. I mean, like, like a contest. We can. You know, uh, like... I think he has his heart set on the music stuff. Okay. His yeah. pan flute plays without him playing it. That's Yeah, cuz I cuz I tried there. to give him I tried to give him candy and he wouldn't accept that. Hmm. Do we want this box is the question. Well, as Uravir said, if it's in the box, then it can't be used by one of us. And there is a chance that the once the undead skeletal centaur come, that they could take it easier than if we were wearing it. Um, I... There's another possibility. Hmm. Or they could just cut off Uravir's hand just to get it. No. If you are intent on going to Whitestone, wait to put the box, the ring in the box at Whitestone when you have help. What if we, yeah, if we do it that way. A trap oh. With your bait. Yeah. Would Lord DeRolo like that? I mean, Let's look at Rolo. I think the leader it's of kind Whitestone. of candy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, he owns a shop that makes candy. I, I, I did see that on one of the wrappers, the Dorota chocolate. Chocolate caramel? Because um, at that point, the, 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 what was it, the warden of the hunt wouldn't, wouldn't need to, to send anybody out here, right? If they it, does, it doesn't necessarily make them come. It lets them know where this thing they want is, so 
depending on the creature's intelligence, they can store you scents and whatnot. Okay. So, personally, I, I want to stick with um, my original choice of having uh, Ked direct us to the road to return to Whitestone. Um, I, it is it, it is up to Rowan and Sayuri if they want to or not play the concert. Side dad had a Rowan. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Do you want to do this? <sighs> I can I can just play back up. You can be solo. I will just do a little ditty behind you. It's fine. Can you keep up though? <laughs> 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 I, I need to know you. You gonna? You, you would be able to, because at the end of the day, this is one guy. We could just go sure, back to sure. Whitestone and play for a whole tavern. I, 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 I think I, I told you I am proficient in this. I know how to play. I think I grew up learning how to play this. So, um, I'm not. I just. I never heard you. So, like, I don't know. Well, that's because I don't have a flute. Why not? I have a lute because I play the lute. Well, I don't know why I don't have a flute. Maybe I left it at home when I decided to go for a walk and got transported back to wherever the fuck this is. That sounds like a bigger problem. <laughs> <laughs> I... I'm i just staring at him. Just, just glaring right at this second. Like, you will get stabbed with a rusty spoon sort of glare. <laughs> and Ked, 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 what is he doing? Ked is, uh, is sit back and has begun to play his pamphlet again. Okay. <sighs> I must say maybe when we come back from White Sun with a flute you'd be using his flute. And I don't know that I'd trust that. Okay, so get my own flute first. Okay. Okay. Given what you said, I feel like using his flute may not be the best option. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. You guys. Then we'll come and melt his face off. <laughs> All right. Or, sounds good. Or fair, I, I've seen that look before. I think Rowan almost got stabbed with a rusty spoon. <laughs> <laughs> There's a chair leg, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back oh. to the huddle. Back to dad huddle number one. Okay. <laughs> Wait, I don't know we're going to explain our idea. You want to go get your own flute and return so that we can have a battle to get the box to then return to Whitestone and set a trap? No! <laughs> How does it sound bad when you say it? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to go get my food and come back here to get the box and set a trap out here for these guys. Uh, uh, mm, I think a trap set by us in the woods is more like a trap for ourselves. Well, not if you're sneaky enough. Uh, <laughs> so is the road who <laughs> rolled in that one. <laughs> Mortis gets the same glare and will get stabbed with a rusty spoon. But she's got a Lucifer. I do have Lucifer. <clears throat> Ringer, they do have a point though. The, the flute plays by itself. It could very easily be sabotaged and we don't know where he, he's going to require us to go play another concert. So you're saying no to the, the deal. Is that what I'm understanding? For right now. But not a no thank you, just a no. How we'll just we will give him an I O U. No, no, no. <laughs> just the... I thought you said not to do that. I didn't say anything I O U's, did I? You said that we would owe him. 
Uh, that's we, literally, we, we were. Point was we didn't okay. want to if we're favorites. going to wait to have this concert, then it is an IOU, right? It's a. Uh, we might be back <laughs> later. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. You guys talk. We... I'm gonna go back to staring at my destiny. Oh, all right. So for now, we get directions back to the road. We get back to Whitestone, and once we're there, we decide if we would like to come back this way and have a consort, or hunt for skeleton centaurs, or go to the Fey Wild. Does that sound right? Okay. Um. Ked. Uh, <clears throat> mm -hmm. Could we have directions to the main road back to Whitestone? Well. Not if you're asking. Oh, who needs to ask? One of the two would be using up their directions. I see. And I look over at Dizzy and Sayuri. You want me to paint your hooves? They'll find the way they are for now. That is sound um, fun, though. We could paint each other's hooves. You want to do it? Do you have paint? Mm. You want to borrow mine? I prefer not to borrow things. Um, he begins to uh, take some pigments of flowers and mix them up. And, and I will go over to Siri. Um, I think it will require your um, gift to get to Whitestone and disease to get to the Fey Wild. I think you need to be the one that asks Ked how, how to return. <clears throat> if I'm understanding correctly, it, I'm somewhat confused. What do you think will happen if I do go back to Feywild? There, there are all sorts of things I could imagine. You could find the answers you're looking for. You could find answers you didn't want. You could find danger, you know, or all of the above, or we could find nothing I think a lot of things are possible but I think that knowing good or bad is better than not knowing and that you don't want to spend the rest of your days questioning whether or not you should have taken the chance when it was offered. Ah. You're right. But she won't be alone. Yeah. Okay. We need to get come on, we need we need to get Devin back to his family. Um Ked, was that his name? Yes. Yes. Ked. How do we get to Whitestone? The cl the quickest way to Whitestone? Ah, of course. And he blows in his hand, and you see um, five blue butterflies fly out. Follow them. 
Of course. Let's go, guys. And follow after the butterflies. All right. Follow suit. Anything dizzy? Let's finish uh, painting his hooves. Any paint chores? One more thing. Mm -hmm. How many spouses do we take? <laughs> many as you want. Okay. Can I leave? Hmm. Oh, yeah, we may be back. I yell over my shoulder. <laughs> Only with tree. We have to bring trees? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna elbow Dizzy. I'm like, he's talking about you. Okay. Yeah. He thinks your name is Tree. Why? I don't know. It was weird. <laughs> Maybe because there's so many around here. Maybe he knows where I come from. Probably. Oh, right. those are pretty blue butterflies. Let's go. Yeah. Following the butterflies. Yeah. Um, then about two days time, you find yourself outside Whitestone, walking in the large doors of the village. Before you is Castle Whitestone, past the village itself. Some of you, it's the first time seeing it. Yeah. It's massive. There's a large tree almost at the center of town. Um, Did you see that tree, Dizzy? Which one? That giant one. I don't think I've seen a bigger tree. Oh, yeah. I saw that this time I was here. It's so big. I wonder how old it is. Um, well, uh, I don't know. Think we could ask it? Mm -hmm. I could. I could ask it. Ask it how old it is. Okay. I'm going to walk up to the tree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You walk up to the tree. Hello, tree. How old are you? Are you using something for this? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> there is wind and breeze and you see... Um, Five stakes with five pieces of rope tied upon it. But no answer. Ah, uh, she's five. She's five? <laughs> That's mm -hmm. it? She's only five? In tree years. How, how many years is tree years? It's like if you were to take a regular year and and make a circle out of it and then add some triangles you get like a factor of a number of some sort and a few letters five sounds complicated it's very Jeez, complicated, complicated. Mm -hmm. believe me i was raised by them they they're very very smart I believe it. This one looks like the smartest one. Oh, no. No? No. I knew a much smarter tree. Was it Grandma Willow? No. Um, uh, well, I. she was sort of like my mother. <laughs> and she, she used to 
have these really long branches and trees and leaves. I mean, and the leaves would sometimes fall uh, whenever she, you know, thought I needed, you know, uh, some encouragement. And she was really something. It sounds like it. We'll get you back to Mother Willow. Oh, no. Um, no, she, she's she gone. Oh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I th think she's a table somewhere now. Oh, no. Well, at <laughs> least she was... At least she was... I Okay. Um, maybe we should go to uh, meet your people. Or somebody's people. We were supposed to meet somebody, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Um, yes. yes. Oh, we need to take Lord. Rowan to his husband. Dorolo. Rowan? Oh, not Rowan. I'm yes. sorry. Devin. <laughs> <laughs> I did it again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still doing it. Yeah, we need to take Devin to his husband. Yes. Yes, we do. Uh, I think he was a guard. Is it guard? I think so. I think Is that right? Bobby? He's a <laughs> caravan guard. So <laughs> he doesn't actually work for the city, but he does okay. guard caravans. He may or may not be in town. He may or may <laughs> not so be we gotta find guard. somebody that may or may not know where... No problem. I'll go find every guard. <laughs> one of them... <laughs> Found to be the right gonna, one. I'm just gonna we're just gonna run around yelling out Devin's husband. Devin's husband. We need Devin's husband. We're on the case. Guys, guys, we, we yeah. can just take him to Castle Whitestone. Oh. Okay. I mean, Lord Dorolo owes me a question anyway. Enigma has done her best to cover herself as they entered the city. Like before okay. they entered the city. Okay. Fine. Um so if your desire here is to make it to the uh, to Castle Whitestone, um, it takes about till late afternoon for you to get an audience um, with Lord Dorolo. And he actually comes down to meet you in uh, the grand lobby with a, <coughs> here there are purple and black fabrics. Um, Mostly on the rug and drapery and large portraits. One of the family. Um, you see <clears throat> uh, the man you know as uh, Lord Dorolo, along with um, his wife, children. Um, one being a tiefling child, as, as well as a bear. Speak to animals. It's a portrait. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, take your time. No, wait. I didn't roll for what my animals were today. <laughs> she was way for that, too. She was so sad. She's like, he's going to do the sun tree voice. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, do I speak with us? No. I'm like, oh, she's like, dang. <laughs> she so wanted it. Okay, so we have a, my panther again. So, per, uh, Lucifer. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's Balto, my dire wolf. <laughs> and another panther. So that's Pervier Jr. <laughs> or <Lucifer. laughs> yeah, Pervier. I'm just going to name that one Pervier. <laughs> 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 okay. okay. And uh, Lord Dorolo comes down quickly, um, <clears throat> and he spots you carrying um Devin's rifle, and just stops. It's a pistol. Evan, uh, pistol, pistol. I'm sorry. That was a pistol, and um, stops, looks. <clears throat> Damn. 
puts his hand out. Oh, before that, before that, can I do something real quick? Sure. I'm I'm going to tie a pink ribbon to the pistol. Mm. Devin was a he was my sneaky friend. Mm. He was a good person. Devin was, yes. I will. Hmm. I would do something special with this. Um, I. Mm, it's part of this, but it's never. It's never a pleasant part. I've done too many. Too we many retired. Hoping that Devon could get proper funeral rites at the Temple of the Regan Queen. Mm. And that his personal effects be returned to um, his significant other. B. I will see that it is done. Morris will reach into the bag of holding and produce said personal effects, including the whispering longsword. Kind of. fingers and servants come and take everything. Uh, he clips the gun on his waist. Um, I am. Sorry that you lost a companion. Thank you. Um, we're still searching for leads on the, the powder from the crystals. Um, it, it was stolen. Um, Ornus will shrug the map off his shoulder and say, we found this map <laughs> as part of our investigation. It... Hmm. And rolls um, in. That, that came from, sorry, that came from the ship. The, the, ship. Ship. the, the, the ship, one yeah, that's what was, I thought. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that. Mm. yeah, it came from the pirate ship. I don't know no. that it's related, but. He's unrolling this big ass map on like on the floor. <laughs> Apparently. Probably, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah like, oh, this is a well. It, it map. keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> you could use it as red carpet. Um, hmm, in indeed. I, I must say. You, you've been gone quite some time. What what have you found out? It's a stolen from where from whom? From it, our notes, it looks like you had some. Was it okay? Let me make, let me clarify because in the diary it said that a an employer, a previous employer of ours, or something like that. I was thinking it was Percy. That had dealings with had some stake in this. No, I want to that clarify was, that. That was the one that ran off. Um, we have yeah. found out that the okay. crystals Never. are from a tomb of an archfey, and oh somebody has been mining them and. <laughs> Exporting, if you will. Rowan and I almost died in there. Yeah. Like, we were melting. Rowan's eyes almost popped out of his head. So this... Disassociates the body from itself? It causes the body to change. <laughs> Interesting. And it created monsters, like like a group of people that were mining in there were like melted down and cre like made into this stalagmite 
tentacle monster thing and another guy he'd been down there for a while he was like looney toony and um he uh he like we thought we put him out of his misery and uh devin shot him and then his head exploded and his brain became another like creepy crawly spider brain monster thing and attacked us and um even like rowan and i's bat like attacked us <laughs> the dust of the of the <laughs> cave is very hazardous to even breathe Let's see um many of the creatures were are Akin to to what we what we encountered initially down in underneath Slayer's Cake, um, except in that instance they had all the confectionery to work with. Mm. So we have a. <laughs> Not just hazardous to individual, but hazardous to entire sis. Anyone who would come across the individual dust, having Correct. escaped our gates, heading somewhere we don't know. Yes. To do things we can't anticipate. Any idea of who was taking this? Of what? Any other evidence? Ah. Uh. In the did did I get that uh a diary back from the I from the frost giant? I believe you did. Okay, I'm I'm gonna hand it over to him. Hmm. This is we found this in the cave. I see. Rangar. Did, do you still have that uh, shard that you that came out of that tentacle monster thingy? We. Or did we put that in the bag of holding? Um, all I have are these, and I take out the uh, two sling stones that. Um, mm were infused with the crystals. Yeah, yeah, yeah the one steps back and <laughs> like goes and ends up grabbing like some fireplace tongs and kind of <laughs> what you've told them about it, like hey and is hmm. Does anybody so, remember where we put that shard that came out of the stalagmite after we killed it? Cause I think we wrapped it up in something like some of the clothes that was on the floor and we put it, I think we put it in the back of holding. Oh, I do not remember. I don't remember. Either. I don't remember taking that chart. I don't remember seeing it. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only one that takes the notes? No, I don't remember the shards at, at all. The, the shards I, from the monster. In defense, my character wasn't there, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Lord, Lord Drolo? Yes. Where can we find Emmerich Swift stuff? Emmerich. Emmerich Swift stuff. Mm, I'm sorry. DM's brain's not working. Would you please help me? <laughs> um. So he. I mean, I'm assuming that him and, and Devin had a home somewhere. Um, but, I mean, it's he, it's also possible that he is actually out guarding a caravan. That's oh, so you're asking about Devin's husband. Okay, yes, yes. Devin's yes. husband, yeah, Emmerich, yeah. Emmerich. Um, I, uh, so I can check the uh, logs to see who. Uh, I can check that. Um, any Snaps his fingers again. He's like, give me the caravan logs, please. I'm going to ask Moritz for the bag of holding real quick. I will hand it over. I'm going to reach in and pull out the shard <laughs> that we got from that tentacle monster thing because I'm the only one that seems to remember it. Okay, same thing. Grabs it. 
um, with the tongs. Mm. And begin still looking at the journal a little bit, reading it over. Um, just sort of kind of take. I do have in my notes that the the one that was went crazy was spell right two oh five. Yeah. From the League of Miracles. Yeah. And that was in the journal, so No, that's what he told us. Oh, is it? I thought yeah. that came from the journal. No, that's what he told us. So do you relay that information? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Courtney, I do kind oh. of remember wrapping something in clothes. Mm -hmm. So it could be a shard. I just don't I, I mean when you say you remember wrapping in clothes from the ground that's in my head but it's okay oh. I, I i i tend to go back and re-watch our gameplay so i can write better notes and remember stuff better so when, oh, but forgiving stuff's part of the fun <laughs> <laughs> when morbis mentions the spell right 205 um it clicks for Ringar. He's like, and um he said he volunteered to work for someone called the wonder worker I see. And I, th I think Devin mentioned something about a court of miracles, a, a, a something miracles. League, I think. League of miracles. The League of miracles, you say? Are you certain? Yes. 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 And. The person that they were collecting for, their name started with the letter A, but they perished before they could finish it. He quickly says, follow me, and takes you um, up the stairs into a very plain room <coughs> that... Um, those of you who've been here enough recognize that it's absolutely featureless. It's just plain stone walls, no windows, except that there does seem to be engravings of runes in their walls. And it is the product white stone. So he bids it's all so of them in there quickly. It's so white in here. <sighs> yes. Here, it's impossible for those who are not here to hear. Closes the door. It's been enchanted against all types of incursion. Now listen to me. I would be... Uh, it would be very, it would be very foolish to utter this to anyone that is not, to already don't know is safe. Do you know the League of Miracles? No. Um, see. But of our party, only Devon had even heard of the name. All right. So. Now here's the thing. Aman was ransacked. Utterly destroyed. Um, remnants, ruins left over from the incursion of Thorodek and the Chroma Conclave. Some of you, I don't know if you're too young, but the War of the Dragons. Uh, three, in fact. Um, four, Ultimately, but uh, the fifth one was dealt with pre, at any rate. What is certain is that there was destruction of Amman, and much money, some from ourselves, was made for its reconstruction as capital of Tardori and home of the Tardori Council, the ruling authority. 
and those were free contracts given to whoever would take them. And no one suspected that the League of Miracles would appear. A group of spell workers who were conjured beasts of pure arcane power and were able to do what would take years in mere weeks. And thus incurred the indebtedness of Oman. You see, the bounties put on these projects never thought that they could make it in time were all collected within months. And they've grown quite a powerful faction. And we've been uncertain of their motives and what they ultimately want. And some of us know best to not trust those with such easy access to power. How long ago was this? Lord Did they start doing it? been 20 years. It started a few years after okay. that they were able to come to the help. Okay. Um, At the name Thordak, you see more as visible visibly shudder that's it I mean I don't know if they've had this I don't know what this material is to them if it's something new or something old I think it's old it's an archfey but here we've got we've got some problems if they are attach, attaching if they are bleeding dry a corpse of an archfey as you say there will be retribution you don't grave rob a living civilization of like the fey To, if they're using that to solidify power and doing willing to sacrifice their people for it it's not people who need to have the power they have and three we cannot simply this journal even what you say would not be enough to make up for their influence and the people they own the the journal has a ledger. Seventy percent of what they were mining was going to Triana. There's another thirty percent that could be unaccounted for, based on our knowledge. I see. Um, ten percent went to the guild, and. Then also some of it went to the Nocturne Lady in the Obsidian Path. I don't know these names. Not only will there be retribution from the Fae, but the Frost Giants are also kind of pissed about what's happening. They kind of attack uh, uh, the temple. They did, but there is disagreement within their own faction. Um, those, those that attack the temple are not the majority. They are um, just the impulsive. We were able to come to an agreement with the Frost Giants. The they are continuing to look into the the mining that occurred where where the entrance is we were able to find the exit where they were able to remove the crystals but the frost giants are looking for the entrance and hopefully both can be closed I see but a majority of the crystals available 
have already been mined. From what we were able to see, it is a large amount. Then we have a problem. I don't know how all that is around here works. I can't imagine what is in the mountain would not affect what is here or in the parchwood. I would have you travel to Amman and or I think at best you make your way there and see if you can find either on your way or there any sign, any evidence. If Chilani must have traveled, she did not, she had to have rested at some point. There would be people along the way, even if she's there already, which is possible. How far there... away is Mon? Quite a ways. Is there Maybe. someone in Amon we should speak to? Yes. Um, uh, I feel as though these types of things, in my experience, tend to go their own way. If I don't want to put timing on you, just to know that the longer things take, the more happens. And your path might not be straight. And I've done this type of thing enough to know that. And he hands you um, a it looks like a it's actually a made of platinum a coin and it has um three g's on each side emblazoned it goes take this once you're there do what you need to you should be able to ask, and after enough pestering, you can likely find him. You're looking for a man by the name of Gilmore. Show him this and tell him what you found. He will... should be able to provide some aid. Uh, he runs a shop, Gilmore's Glorious Goods, and amongst other things that he does. Now, as far as these other issues, I know your Temple of Santulan, Homo Santulan, Renga, I will not have you abandon your home, or any of you. Um, however, should you accept this, you... Um, together may have 2,000 gold in equipment from our uh, stocks and uh, we're able to give you 100 gold for your pathways. You've already proven more useful 100 gold each for your personal expenses. And I am asking you to chase this down. As soon as I give this to anything official, we are going to face immediate issues. Your mm, noviceness is extremely useful right now. What do you say? Um, before we accept, has there been any leads on finding Ruby's friend? <laughs> G 
Gotta remember the reminder. Uh, I'm so sorry. In session one, um, there was a woman with a dog named Ruby. The dog was named Ruby. The woman yep. found us outside the Slayer's Cake. I asked her how old she was, and she freaked out and ran away. And I've been worried about her ever since. <laughs> I asked them to help track her down. So I don't know if there's been any leads. It's White Stone Ruby. So he, he, he stares at you a long time. <laughs> right, the dog. Um, Ruby has her dog. She's okay? Yes. <laughs> okay. Kind of laughs to himself. He goes, more things change. <laughs> I had a friend you'd like. I've, um, I've, I've also got a question. Quick question. Quick question. Um, you have a bear? My wife has a bear. He's awesome. Can I pet the bear? The bear is not currently. Bear is with my wife currently, actually. Oh. Hey, Lord Dorolo, you remember how there was that, that question I had? Hmm. Yes, I remember. What question? <laughs> Would it be possible to have the bear tell us goodbye before the journey? I am not aware of when they will return. That's okay, because we've got to stay here for the funeral anyway, because it was in Devin's wishes that Fire Squirrel be the one to light his body on fire. Mm. So. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mm -hmm. forgot about that. Um, say at some point here, uh, he did get information um, that currently... Um, few things um devin's husband is out on patrol except there's something that he kind of doesn't anticipate as that his last assignment was with trilani <gasps> and has not come back oh no oh no Oh. That just became my top priority. <laughs> oh, no. As he kind of looks, he goes, <sighs> Are you okay, Bobby? <laughs> this is why I hate bureaucracy. <sighs> I'm part of it. I love it. I 100% <laughs> love it. I am oh my God. super okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It was secretly what I was wishing in my head. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. You don't happen to have a flute that I can have, do you? You don't want the flutes that arise out in here. You don't know where they've been. <laughs> the foots? Flutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have interesting friends. <clears throat> No. <laughs> I need a oh, flute. Do you know where oh, I can get a flute? There are shops. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like, if, if it's not too much trouble, would it be possible to um, send word to the temple that we're alive? Yes. Um, we were. We went into the mines from the temple but the exit was as far from it and as far as they know we are still in there mm. yes yeah, so this comes up to this there are many avenues you can pursue sounds like you could try to get back into this mine you seem to have some arrangement with these frost giants <laughs> 
I know that you are, I'm sure, to be a combination of, of logic and clues and pure emotional reaction. But <clears throat> to understand your path will be what you choose. And it will, we just will all hope it works out well. Um, the, um, now that I'm thinking of it, uh, is Rowan still wearing the collar? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it's shiny. Of course he is. <laughs> that aids in preventing the dust within the caverns from killing those that traverse it. Is it possible to make more of them? Most things are possible. Actually, your best bet would be to show that to Gilmore when you arrive. I see. But thank you. If, if I may, one more thing. Um, when we got to the Temple of Amasantulan, there was a, an alchemist by the name of Crazer who seemed to know about the crystals in great detail. If you wanted to be left alone, um, but I imagine if, if there's an emergency or information uh, needs to be gathered, uh, he may be able to help. I kind of nudge him and, dude, that's, that, he sent us to meet him. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> oh. He's there. <laughs> oh, he's, there. he's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't quite look like the same dwarf. He's kind of reptilian and seal like, but he he's alive and there. Um, <laughs> yes. You, hmm. That may be another avenue for you to follow up as well. He I don't know if he mentioned he is formerly of the league. We no, didn't know anything about that. the league when we met him. And if did our elf friend happen to come by here? Who was with us? Scantily we, clad. He he made a. He, oh. His, his... No, he did not make his way here. If if you see him, could you give him a message for me? <sighs> mm, sure. Punch him in the face. Oh. He'll get it. I think I might have fun with that. <laughs> I've lost interest, and I'm currently putting braids in Dizzy's hair. <laughs> I... So, uh, I will have them take you down to the stores where you can take what items you may wish. Um, I would tell them the budget that we just I told you. Um, they will also make sure you leave with your gold. Is there anything else I can answer for you? When we come back, can I pet the bear? If the bear is here, I will ask Vexalia if that is okay. Vexalia? Is that your wife? Yes. That's a pretty name. I like that name. I do too. Oh, in that case, again... He almost he actually kind of eyes glances at Dizzy. Watch how, who you tell this to. And these people are dangerous. And if they, as you say, allowed their own people to die, they would 
behead anyone who they even thought would be a problem. Then, do I have... What was it? The series was that. What is your group name? Did you come up with one? Yeah. With a menagerie. And do I have the menagerie on the case? I believe so. Yeah. I think. Excellent. Quickly open the door and you begin descending into the um, some vaults underneath white stone down down to the steps. Matt, and... as everyone leaves, Mortis will stay behind for just a moment. Mm -hmm. And simply ask, you mentioned Thordak. Yes. Tell me what became of him. We killed that son of a bitch. And his his legacy still haunts all of Taldore, especially in Abnon. His tear, they're still trying to heal. Hmm. Tell me, how was it done? We assembled allies. Elves and all the forces have not raided the city. We made our way, some companions and myself, and we hit him and hit him and hit him, and we tore that damn stone from his chest. And we, as he fled from us down a stinking hole to his den, we caught him slipped his bleeding throat it's what he deserved he deserved Thank you. worse than that General Dron hmm. <sighs> he just nods kind of this understands you went through something and you see the burns of Thorodak and this gentleman as well. And he'll put you on your way. And with that, we're in for tonight. I can't wait to make Gilmore. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Who's Gilmore? Put put those hopes down. Manage your expectations. I have no expectations of anything anymore. My dice rolls suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Oh, Lizzie, you watch on Twitch. Thanks for joining us. We are. We will uh, be back next. Saturday night as we will continue and see of all the possible directions which one would the menagerie take and uh, see you guys next week <laughs>